Okay, hey guys. I was in the middle of creating and talking and the camera SD card was full. So you didn't catch it all and I didn't catch that the camera was off. All right, but that being said, he, this is part two. So I took the little savings passbook and I'm gonna flip it through for you. We did the rubber stamping with one of my stamps and the gray ink, it's archival, what is it? watering can and um, this is one of my stamps from stamp set number 11 I added bits and pieces that I had from friends and family who have passed and are no longer with us mostly my grandmother but not solely from her I added some of my words from my um, set of printable words off of my Etsy shop that I thought were appropriate to things that she taught me and my grandfather taught me growing up um, this is one of the flowers that was pressed into one of her books We've got the little uh, religious prayer card with her name on the back. This um, Avery, this is an Avery, I'm sorry, Denison gummed label that was in a stash of stuff of hers that I found that I glued on here with another word. This is a little, originally probably had a religious medallion in it. Um, I don't know where the medallion is at. Um, there's a little piece of stray piece of glue or something there. But I put this new um, little charm that I had in her rosary making supplies on with a brad and then I glued this piece down. This was originally a pocket but I left it as a flap. This is a picture of my grandmother, my grandfather, this fat little chubby baby, that's my dad. And there's a piece of um, lace here. This is actually from my friend Lisa Swank. And this was um, a piece from, I believe, her grandmother, her, her mother that she had. This is one of those funny cards that was in my grandmother's thing with another word. This sticker is one that I did the printing on. We did that earlier in the week where we did the printing of the vintage collection of papers from our family on to clear stickers. And that's one of them, along with a piece of paper from my friend who passed that we did this stamp testing on, another phrase. Here is the religious book plate that I found. I put it in here with brads in each corner. It was a little bit puffy, so honestly, I just whacked it around the edges with the hammer to make it flatter. Worked like a charm. And this, my grandmother had lots of note paper. When she passed, we found an entire dresser drawer, no joke, full of note, just note pads and note paper with her name on them. This is one of the ones I kept, so I cut her name out and it had pretty flowers on it, so I glued them here into the back. So we have the cute little remembrance book. I took the sleeve the book was originally in, wrapped it with some fabric and lace that I had, I included this button on the front that again is from her stash of things, the rosary making supplies that was in one of the boxes, along with one of her toothpicks out of her toothpick uh, box that I had that we used earlier in the week. And this fits in here just nicely. Now we're going to make a part three that's going to be go along with this. The, the, this is going to fit inside of that. So I'll be back with you with part three tomorrow. Um, have fun with this. Enjoy the process. And I am not sure if this is going to be part 1A or 2. I don't know. This is part of the My Year 2017 Facebook group. If you're not a member of the group, maybe you should be. The links are all in the description below, so check it out. Uh, links to my Etsy shop, Happy Mail, my other Facebook group, all that stuff. So check it out. All right, this is it for right now. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Okay, so here we are with part three of our little rem mini um, remembrance series um, that we're going to do um, celebrating our loved ones, in my case, loved ones who have passed. And in amongst my grandmother's things, I found this. this. It obviously looks like the front or back, probably more likely the back of an old book. I don't know what old book. I don't have the other part of it. This was just stuffed in a bunch of stuff literally just like this. I've cut a piece of chipboard that's about the same size so they match. And my idea is to use this vintage piece for the cover. I want to put the cigarette silk on the cover. Uh, I'm going to cover the back with some distressed fabric and some muslin and bits and pieces I have here on the table. We're going to layer some fun things on this cover like the doily. 
I have an old sweater I want to cut up because my grandmother was always wearing her cardigans and her sweater sets. And we're going to add some more of her bits and pieces to the outside and inside of this book. So we're going to get started with that. And we're going to get started with the cover. And I do have this this distressed cotton that I made and I just wrapped this cotton fabric up with things that would get rusty or inky, plant material, rusty metal, and soaked it in vinegar. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of videos on how to do that here on YouTube and this, I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? All right, so we're going to use a piece of that. And I want to All right, so we're going to rip it because I want the ripped edge. Where's my other? There it is. So I want this to be the outside. So I'm just trying to figure out how far I want to go with this. I think here. So that would be the outside, so I'd put it here and I would glue this to there. I do think this is a little bit wide, so let's, let's trim it a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. So we would put that there, we would put this here, so then my question would be for myself, how much of this do I want on the front cover? Because maybe I need to trim it a little bit more. Yeah. So we're going to put some glue on here. I'm going to just keep using the tacky glue because it's handy, it works well, it dries fast. Baby wipe. Why is it you always get three baby wipes instead of just one? Okay. You could use Yes Paste. You could use a lot of things. I'm going to just use the tacky glue. All right. So now I want to put this here on the edge like that. Put some on here. line up the top and bottom edge, leave a gap for the spine. Okay, I'm going to cover the inside with some muslin and probably those strips that I tore off. I happen to have this piece of, um, this is some kind of muslin bag. I don't remember where I got this from, to be honest with you. Could be from Happy Mail, could be something something came in. I don't, honestly don't know. doing lots of ripping because I just want it to be very kind of organic looking. I don't want it to be too pretty and too perfect. Okay, so we're going to glue that there.
Now you could use yes paste or something like that. It'll take longer to dry than the turbo tacky glue will. You could also stitch it around the edge. You're going to still want to do some gluing though. Yep, I like that. I think I want to add some of this to the inside. I'm leaving the strings. I'm not getting rid of the strings and the threads. I'm leaving the strings. Oops. I have some of this blue fabric. This is actually a roll of ribbon. It's like a, a blue muslin. that I actually got it in the floral department at Hobby Lobby. And I think I want to do some layering of it. Maybe just that piece. We want to use our watermelon. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer things on top of each other until this, I am going to leave the strings, but this one's kind of long, so let's cut it shorter. We're going to layer things on top of each other until we get something that we like and can live with. Very organic. And so I'm going to get some of that sweater material out and a few other things. I'm going to play with them on the cover. When I figure out how I want them, I will be right back. I got it. So I'm going to remove these and start gluing them on one at a time. I haven't, again, I haven't trimmed anything perfect. I haven't sewn anything. You could, of course, put stitching around the edge. I am just going to be pretty organic about it. Except for the times when I get splatter glue everywhere. Holy cow. This glue will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about it drying white. I may add some staples too. We're going to get these glued on first and then we're going to see about adding some staples. I like the look of staples. You could put brads, hinges. Ooh, I might add a hinge. Let's get our watermelon on here. Okay, where's our stapler? I like the idea of putting a hinge on there. Hang on a second. I have a drawer of hardware. Like literally a drawer of hardware. Ooh, I have some rusty metal I just made. <gasps> we need to put that on there. I got that cross on the front and I got the little piece of distressed copper on here. It took a little finagling. I had to get out the craft knife and poke a hole um, all the way through all the layers so I could put some brads in there. I had some sort of distressed copper brads. I love the way that looks. So that's our front cover. Now we are going to take our other piece. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm already losing track of pieces. All right. 
this is going to go in here. I don't expect it to close. In fact, I don't know that I really want it to close. And this is one of those crosses that evidently at one time had a relic or artifact in it because the back of it opens, which is interesting. We're going to leave it and let it stay open. I am going to take some more of these pieces and I'm going to create sort of signatures or something out of them to put some pages in here. My grandmother did do needlework, so I'm going to use that for sure. Um, I'm going to probably turn this into pockets because I'd like to stick some of the prayer cards in the pockets and maybe use some of her handwriting. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to figure out exactly where I'm going to put things and I'll be right back. <laughs> 